Okay, so well, today I wanted to talk, I'm, I'm so excited to talk about this with you because I know you like, um, uh, you're a health coach, but you did, um, we did talk about this the last time I saw you. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted to talk about boundaries. We had a five days challenge and today's the last day of the challenge. So today I wanted to have you here and we're going to talk about the boundaries and for the, uh, for the group, for women in the group, how important it is to have boundaries. And now a lot of people look at the boundaries in a different ways. Some look at it as in like, well, you know, yes, I do have it. Something they don't, they don't, it's not necessary, you know, I'm okay with it, but I want to take your perspective. But before we do that, <laughs> tell, tell the ladies, what do you do? I know you're a health coach, but. You know. Oh, okay. Well, um, I think if we're going to talk about boundaries, people may want to know how, why should they listen to me? <laughs> So, or not it doesn't even and even though no, I, we even do, we after do. I say this you may not want to listen but anyway anyway um well I am a, I'm a MSW master's in social work uh, I'm a therapist I don't practice anymore um but I was for well I was in the field of mental health for 20 years um I started working with the juvenile delinquent population I worked in juvenile justice for a little while and worked in a residential facility with juvenile boys who committed all kinds of crimes wow. and loved that job. I'm not going to lie. Loved it. Loved it. Uh, they were really fun um, and not for everyone, but I loved it. Um, and then I went on to get my master's degree and got hired at a nonprofit here in Eugene, private nonprofit as a therapist. And so what I worked in is something called psychiatric day treatment. And what that is, it's, it's kind of a combo of kind of an outpatient model, but um, in residential in a way, right, to right. understand that. So it's not residential. The kids don't live there. They don't sleep there. They don't spend the night, but they come there for school. So they can be in what's called a treatment milieu at right. the same time receive education. Okay. And so in the milieu, it was, you know, we had a team of a teacher, uh, support staff, and then two therapists, I being one of them, and we had several classrooms, blah, blah, blah. And so um, I did that for quite some time. I became a program director, built other day treatment programs from the ground in the community. Um, I had several programs in schools here in our community, um, started a high school program, um, did that for quite some time, and then eventually became the quality assurance director where my entire job was making sure that the agency was following um, all of the Oregon administrative rules in terms of paperwork and laws. And then I was also the HIPAA privacy officer, which was not so fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once you get there. Um, yeah, so that was my job. So the kids that I worked with, most, I would say most, night, like 99% of the kids I worked with had suffered some kind of abuse whether it was emotional, sexual abuse, physical abuse, neglect. Most of the kids I worked with were in foster homes and had been removed from the home. Um, so I'm very familiar with all of that. And so working with kids and working with their parents and working with adults, um, but that's my background. So in terms of boundaries, um, I mean, that's at the heart of a lot of what I did. Right, 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 right. right. Mm -hmm. Well, um, uh, this is this isn't a great timing, right? Because I just saw uh, Kanye West that he went like a uh, bizarre. I know I don't know if you saw that or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he was like now declaiming that he's a bipolar and something that there's a lot of opinion going around and saying that well he does it because of the attention or because of the one attention in some degree. But this is a really really serious uh, a problem when you have when you're bipolar when you have a depression problem. I think it's, it's, it's not something to just take it so lightly. You know, I, I know that there's a lot of people, um, well, I'm depressed or I'm bipolar and that's it. And, and they don't really take it that seriously, but in add on and it could get really, really severe. Mm -hmm. And that is what causes and a lot of people um, in today's society have it because I remember the last time that the number was uh, 30, uh, 3 million or more than that mm -hmm. adults are suffering from bipolar. Um, mm -hmm. And all of that is come back what you're saying that what you did from, from background at their childhood, either they were abused physically, sexually, or they were in a foster home or the parents were, right. you know, abusing uh, drugs and stuff like that. Well, in terms of diagnosis, um, 
bipolar is more of a chemical imbalance in the brain. Um, and it used to be called back in the day, manic depression is what it was referred to as. Um, and they changed the name in terms of if you're talking about a person who has suffered any kind of trauma in their history, you know, it runs the gamut of what could end up happening in terms of a diagnosis. I mean, there's so many variables. I mean, we could be on here for hours talking about this, right, but right. it really depends upon their resiliency. It depends upon their age. What was the abuse that occurred? How often was it occurring? Um, did they have a support system? Um, how resilient? I mean, there's so many factors. So a lot of the kids that we worked with ended up having post-traumatic stress disorder. And for a lot of people, that's hard for them sometimes to understand. And even when we were working with the parents or foster parents, um, even, you know, our department of, um, our DHS, which is child protective services. Um, I remember talking a lot with caseworkers and trying to teach them and educate them on what that means for kids, because a lot of people, when they think of trauma and post-traumatic stress disorder, they think of someone who has been in war and seen really horrible things. And yeah. if they hear like a helicopter, they think that they're going to be shot at. I mean, that's a very kind of typical example, but kids can suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, but not always. Again, it really depends. It depends on what it is. Right, but bipolar disorder is more of a chemical imbalance. Um, and uh, I think now in terms of my health coaching education, um, a lot of people may disagree with me, but when I was on my way kind of leaving uh, my previous job, you know, I had already become a health coach. And so for me, I was seeing a totally different side of things from the health perspective. And in my opinion, this is just my opinion, <laughs> that, you know, the medical Western medicine is starting to kind of catch up to more holistic ways and natural ways of healing. Um, depending upon who you're talking to and where you're at. But I think in terms of mental health, we're kind of still in the dark ages. Um, and I think that many, many symptoms that people are having in terms of mental illness can also be attributed to their physical health. It's all connected. Right, right. And that's why I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to have you because uh, it, it is so true. We, me and you, we talked about this, that how, um, with the holistic part of it and with the healing your own body. And like you said, um, eating good food, taking care of yourself. And yeah. that's why we, we, we here to talk about boundaries and I want to know your perspective, what a boundary means to you and why people should have it, especially women. Cause we are here in this group. We are all women. Uh, why is it so important? Um, gosh, let's see. I'm trying to figure out a succinct answer. I, I think what I, what I want to begin with is kind of when I was thinking about talking about this today, I was thinking about kind of where we're at right now in right. terms of everything going on. Uh -huh. And I think collectively, all of us, um, regardless of where you stand on the matter, regardless of your opinion, what we can all agree upon is that we're faced with a lot of uncertainty right now, uh, not knowing what the future holds, what what things will be looking like six months from now, a year from now. Um, and that is really unsettling um, for all of us. And we're all dealing with it in different ways. And so I think, you know, like I used to talk about when I was a therapist is that the way that I would explain to a parent a child's trajectory in terms of treatment um, as I would always tell them, please understand this is going to get worse before it gets better. Because as a therapist, I have to process a lot of what's happened with this child and give them space to, you know, kind of get it out there and work with it. And, you know, people don't go from A to Z and just suddenly be better. There's a couple steps forward, a couple steps back. And so what I also talk about is that, you know, you can the way that I would explain this in terms of a kid that I would be working with is that you could be making a lot of, the child could be making a lot of progress and we're seeing all this progress and they're starting to heal and then something happens and then their anxiety shoots up and then you start to see the behaviors again. Um, that's very true with what I think is happening now. Right. So what I see happening is that the way that, that people process their anxiety and deal with their anxiety, um, 
all old habits or things that they maybe have worked on or ways that they don't deal with it in a functional way are starting to surface. And so that's very normal as human beings. And so that's why, you know, it's really important to, you know, try to find ways to ground and uh, get help and reach out to people and connect with each other and support one another because it's really hard right now. And uh, depending upon where you're at, um, you know, it's going to affect everyone in different ways, some more seriously than others. I mean, I really worry right now uh, in terms of people's mental health, I worry about people who are really depressed and who are suicidal. Um, right, concerns right. me a lot. Well, that's, that, that's really, like, like you said, as bringing all these emotions. So we were so busy before this, right? At, at six, mm -hmm. uh, well, now it's like almost six months. Um, everybody was working. Everybody had the, some type of ritual, getting up in the morning, going, even couples, like couples that were married for 20 years. And mm -hmm. then this, and kids were not home. Kids were in the school and everything. So all of a sudden this is, and I did a podcast on this and I said, there's, there, uh, there's, uh, I want to know if you agree to disagree with me because there was a, there's two types of change. One of the changes that are voluntarily, we change voluntarily. We, we decide to do something. We want to lose weight. We want to get married. We want to have a baby. We want to buy a house. You take it, you, you know, you, you, you make a decision, you think about it, you take a little time, uh, you digest a conversation with other people, you just, you know, sit down on it and think about it and then slowly start. Because you have a flexibility to do or not, not do so, then you're like, okay, you know what, I'm going to start. If you get scary, overwhelming, you're just like, okay, you know what, I'm not going to do it. I right. This happened, this change was like almost like a forceful change. You had no choice. It just happened. Everybody's like, okay. And I talked about this a lot and I did it in, I did a podcast and I said to people like, this is when, when an unfortunate ch a change comes in, like it's like a hurricane or, uh, um, um, and in California, they do like a earthquake, earthquake that happens mm -hmm. and other countries that are things, your body react to it. You're in survival mode. Sure. You're in survival mm -hmm. mode at the time you wanted to make it, make it. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden the body shuts down. And then when everything is done, you come back up again and exhausted. So now, Right now, a lot of people are realizing that who they are by being home. Tell me if you agree with me. They took some time and they said, you know, a lot of things that we were doing, it was either not necessary or right. I should have been doing. And they're like reevaluating their own life, you know, like mm -hmm. completely. And mm -hmm. a lot of them, they were like, you know what? I should have said no to this. I should have said no to this long time ago. It affected my health. I was having a stress. I was having anxiety. But I just keep continue doing. So in a way, it's blessing. This has happened for me to reflect on myself and realize. But isn't that important that we have to do that regardless of what once in a while? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, gosh, I have so many thoughts. I think it absolutely it's an opportunity. Um, but I also think that for a lot of people, they're not able to see the opportunity and not because they're resistant to the opportunity, but because they're so overwhelmed with the stress of everything, especially I think people who are living in poverty um, and who have kids who are um, uh, struggling in school and have uh, some form of a disability. Um, I feel my heart goes out to those people right now because they're they're not thinking about an opportunity. They're thinking, how am I going to get through the next tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day? What's going to happen with my child with school? Are they going to get the services that they need? Um, where am I going to find money for to put food on the table? Am I going to be able to get a job? And so I think it really kind of depends upon where you're at. Um, I think for those of us who have the means, we absolutely can view this as an opportunity, but I also think that for a lot of people, they they just they can't even see any opportunity, which I totally understand because they're so overwhelmed. They're just they're like opportunity. I'm dying right now, like I'm struggling, and I need I need someone to just throw me a life raft. So yeah. I think it really kind of depends on where you're at. Um, but in terms of Going back to your question, in terms of boundaries, um, it's really interesting because I think, first of all, where it all kind of stems from is when we think about our childhood and how we were raised and what our experience was as children. And that really kind of dictates 
our relationships later in life and how we set boundaries for ourselves and how we uh, set expectations for how people treat us. And it really depends. But at the end of the day, every single person has the right to feel safe in their relationships, to be respected, to be validated and um, appreciated, to um, have people respect when they say no, um, and to be able to set guidelines for how they want to be treated by another human being. And I think it's sometimes, and I heard this a lot, not just in the field of working in mental health, working alongside other therapists, but also with clients, and that is, I would often hear, well, if I set this boundary, then am I mean? Am I mean? Am I, am I being um, aggressive? Or am I being, um, I'm trying to think of the word I want to say, but I would say no, no, it's not mean. Letting people know how you expect to be treated, how is that mean? You're letting someone understand that this is how I need people to treat me. Um, and usually if, you know, here's a, a common example. This is such a common example, and that is in the family dynamic. And when you have one person in the family who I would say typically it's with a child, with their parent, let's say you have an adult child later in life who, you know, maybe has gone to, is going to therapy or has come to the realization that, wow, you know, these things that happened in my child abuse were not okay. And I no longer want to tolerate that same, you know, treatment as an adult. So I'm going to set a boundary. And typically what can happen in those situations that when the child, old now adult child sets a boundary, a typical response is to say, is for that person to now, their anxiety goes up because they don't know how to respond. But a typical response can be to attack that person, to become emotionally manipulative, um, to name call and attack because you've set a boundary. And so it's really important for that person to stay true. And I think in really serious situations where, especially with couples um, who are struggling maybe in the relationship with each other, um, or in the family that I think what I would tell anyone is to go see a professional. Um, and the reason why I would say that is in order for you to be able to have that conversation, to set a healthy boundary with someone, especially if you grew up in an abusive household of any kind, whether it was physical or emotional, that you know, you have a choice to make. You can either set a boundary by distancing yourself, either physically by like moving to another country <laughs> or moving to another state, um, which that's a whole other area that, that would take a long time to talk about in terms of um, ge just generational transmission and things that happen in the family dynamic. And that is something that we refer to in the therapy world as a cutoff. Um, when someone moves far away from a family member, that's a cutoff, can be a cutoff. But you can choose to distance yourself physically, or you can choose to, you know, another idea is to go into therapy and see a therapist. And that can be a great option for people. So they have, an, a, you know, um, a person there who's objective and who can help everyone through the process and make sure that there's ground rules, there's guidelines that um, people all have a place and a time to speak. And there's someone to kind of hold the space for people and make it a safe place. Because oftentimes in really um, emotionally charged situations with family members in particular, it's not always a safe conversation. It's not a safe conversation to have. Um, but again, it all depends. It depends on what's going on. But everybody has a right to set boundaries for themselves. Yeah. Um, if you get if you get pushback, then you have some choices to make in terms of where you want to go next. I like the way you said that a lot of people are uh, by setting boundaries. You're yeah, they feel like you're mean. Uh, you you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't say no. But from the holistic perspective of it, and I and I do um, a lot of meditation, and I learn a lot about myself. Mm -hmm. So what happened in my relationship, and I I told you the story. Um, 
I was like doing things I was told to do. So obviously as a child, I did because of the, I, I had a respect. Right. So one category of other respect of your, your family, religion, culture. So mm-hmm. that was the respect perspective. It. I said, okay, I do it. And then when, he, when I got married and then I was in a relationship with this man that was physically and emotionally abusive. See, I didn't even, uh, I didn't even know because, because a lot of the time, emotional abuse is very like subtle and very like, yeah. it, like a creeps in, you know? Yeah. It's like a little words that they use and oh, this and yeah. that. It, yeah, versus physical abuse, the BGI, you see, the, you see the, 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 the bruises, you see the cut, you see the bleeding, you see, and then that gets you angry. But it's, mm-hmm. the, it's the emotional abuse that is creeping in and then it just sits there and you keep it and it's within yourself, within your soul and you're just keeping it to yourself. And that can happen with anybody. That can happen even now with any, any relationship. Just the way that somebody talks to you, it could be with a friend, with a boss, with a coworker, mm-hmm. with anything. Uh, emotional abuse and it adds on and that oh, like almost gets like a poison in your body and yes. then all of a sudden that bursts to like wait a minute i don't want to be treated like this i don't want to be talked to like this and then people are like mm-hmm. what do you mean like you know how, how do you how do you uh, uh you can't be doing that you were not like this and all of a sudden because yes. people take care of themselves they're like okay wait a minute i learned about this so it can ha- happen in any age it can happen i mean it happen to it can happen to us now Absolutely. as soon as you realize right Yes, and I will say, um, from a pers- my own personal experience, um, I, I dealt with that. And it wasn't until later in life, which is interesting because it's happened to me recently, is that I realized that I suffered emotional abuse growing up. And right. it didn't even, I, I, I'm telling you, it's so interesting how we can compartmentalize things and put things something over here and we can compartmentalize our life in order to just keep moving forward right and it's very subconscious um but um one thing that that happens um i still remember being in school and learning about this as a therapist and um because it's come up for me a lot lately and it's so true um and this is you know it's not just about you know, your own family dynamics or in your partner relationship. This is also if you decide to change careers, let's say, you know, you decide to leave your job and become a life coach or a health coach or do something where you have visibility and you're doing something that's your own business or, you know, kind of going out there and chasing your dreams, so to speak. Right. Anytime you make changes sometimes in the positioning in your relationship, it throws the other person off in the relationship because they're like, wait a second, you're changing. And when you're changing, that means that I have to change. That means I have to reposition myself within this relationship. And that can be very, feel very threatening to someone. Um, You're not threatening them, but to them, it feels very threatening. it makes their anxiety go up because they're not sure how to navigate that because it's, it's like, well, wait, wait a second. You're becoming a different person. You're, you're acting differently. You're saying different things or you're going down a different road. And I thought we were going down this one and it really throws them off. And so within the dynamic of the relationship, it forces that person to, to either move with you or there's going to be distance and then choices have to be made whether or not this is a relationship that's going to work for me anymore. And I can tell you that um, just becoming a health coach, I, you know, I've, it's, it's altered my relationships, not my, not my husband um, um, at all, but just with some of my friendships. Um, they've oh, changed. Yeah. Absolutely. Because like you said mm-hmm. it perfectly, because it's like, Oh wait, she changed. She changed. And funny, you mentioned that. Um, so when I was, when I had my, um, my, one of my restaurants and I was, I was doing it and I was going, I was working seven days a week. And since I got married very young, I missed that part of my, of my teenager, you know, ha- being a teenager, having fun and stuff when I came over here. So I did all of that. Then all of a sudden in the age of 25, 26, about 26, then I was working, then I was going out, then I was partying, doing all that stuff. So then after that, I got, my body got exhausted. I, I was like, whoa you know, well, this is not going to work for you. So then I changed the whole, like you said, the whole thing. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to do this. And I changed. 
do you know that like said my friend like literally didn't want to hang out with me anymore because they wanted me to be that person but i grew i i, I you know i wanted to change my life i want to change my life for better and my friend was like even saying that well you become boring like now you're boring mm-hmm. They literally would call me in my face and oh. saying that, well, you know what? No, that's okay. We can't come to your house. Cause I was like more like, you know, come to the house and we're going to, you know, we're going to mm-hmm. have fire and we're going to have barbecue. And they're like, no, we're going to go out. We're going to drink and all that. It's the persona that you have that they see you for mm-hmm. a longest time. And then, and then to change, they don't like it. Not because mm-hmm. like you said, they want to change. It's just that you not, it's kind of like you not fulfilling their desire anymore. Right, exactly. You're not there for them. You're not like entertaining them, whether it's emotionally, financially, sometimes even, you know, mm-hmm. as a family, like, oh, you used to do, have this job, making a lot of money and you used to help me. Now that you could, you're changing career and now you're, you know, trying to cut down a little bit. And that can cause a lot of things. And, and then by you setting a boundary saying that, listen, no, you, got, you, you know, it should be the other way around. You're supposed to support me. And people pull back. And I heard that success, uh, uh, life is like lonely. <laughs> and that is so true, <laughs> especially for us coaches, because we are doing, I have literally a, a hug over here going around me. Uh, for us coaches, because we're working behind the computer, like we're home all the time, we're doing this and we're doing everything virtually. A lot of people don't understand. And I, I, I during, during this, even romantic relationship. Yes. Even like the husband saying that, well, wait a minute, like, what do you mean you're changing career? Like, you know, exactly. go get a paycheck, come home, we got to pay, like, you know, or they don't see because it's so hard, like, I don't see results. All they see you sitting in front of the computer, you're not making money. And right. then, like, <laughs> right. Exactly, exactly. Like, what do you do all day? Yeah. Yeah. What do you do all day? You're sitting in front of the computer, they don't understand. And that could get really hard. That could get, That's, but. Mm-hmm. My, my, my saying for the ladies out there that are like thinking that they, I love this ladies over here, but a lot of them are such amazing people that always says yes. And they put the, everybody needs before them. And it's like, okay, I'm not going to do this. I'll do what makes my friend happy. I'll do what makes my partner happy. I'll do. It's one thing to compromise. It's one thing to actually be your true self. Yes. And yeah. And you, and it's funny because I've talked about this too. I think I wrote a blog on it to some extent. Um, but it is, it's very true that you have a right to take care of yourself <laughs> and you have a right to put yourself first. And I think it's very much a cultural thing. Um, and I think for f- females um, in particular, um, we're told to you know, be in this particular role and this is who you're going to be and this is who you are to the family. Um, but at the same time, you know, we also have to take care of ourselves. And, and, and so you can, you can, oh, I'm losing my train of thought. Like you, I think, I think the thing is, is like the roles, I mean, and I'm just going to be really honest here. The, these gender roles drive me insane. Um, they really make me crazy because I think they're really dated. And I think that there it should be more about what is consensual within the relationship in terms of your own agreements in terms of how you are with each other and how you live your life um but these kind of societal roles um i think we get way too caught up in those um and we don't have to be everything to everyone and again you know you're you're we have to take care of ourselves because at the end of the day if we don't take care of ourselves we're not going to be for there for the people that we care about um we can't run ourselves into the ground and we deserve to have people in our lives who support that who support us following our dreams who support the careers that we want to have who support the fact that we want to take care of ourselves it's our, it's our God-given human right to care about ourselves, to take care of our health, to take care of our bodies, to have time alone, to take space, to have quiet, to have moments for ourselves. Um, it, it's, it's ridiculous for anyone to expect us to get up at five o'clock in the morning and then just go, go full speed ahead and serve everyone while also trying to do the things that we need to do. It's ridiculous. And um, it, it burns people out. And then, you know, we have to be careful because then what can end up happening inadvertently is that there's build up resentment, right? Because your, your needs now are not being met. 
And so what I would say to people is that at the end of the day, not only for yourself, but for the people you love, you have a responsibility to communicate to the people in, that you have relationships with what your expectations are and what your boundaries are. So you're very clear and you've taken that responsibility to communicate that to them. And then they now have a responsibility to make a choice whether they honor your your boundaries or not and if they don't you have a choice to make for yourself about whether or not that's a relationship you want to continue but everybody has a right to to take care of themselves and practice self-care and be healthy and not drive themselves into the ground for everyone and always put people first and what i would say to people um to be really honest is I would, I would really ask people some tough questions if I was a therapist working with them and say, what's getting in the way of you not being able to do this and why I'm trying to think I had a question. Just, I just lost it. But if a person is saying, I can't put myself first and I, I need to put everyone else first. I would ask them, why is that? And I would probably dig a little deeper and want to explore that a little bit. <laughs> it is, it is, you know what, Shannon, it's just such a, uh, when, when I, when I hear you talking and it says like, and all of us coming over here, we're saying that, okay, you have to take care of yourself. It is such a shame that we have to actually take time and realize this and go through so much pain as a woman, like you said, the gender thing, right? as a woman, mm -hmm. because of the society, because of the culture, because of all these things that you mentioned, to almost feel guilty to take care of yourself. And yeah. then we have to do all this work to say, I'm, I'm, I'm just taking care of myself. I'm not hurting anybody. Exactly. I am just, I'm just taking, my, uh, taking care of myself. We get up in the morning, five o'clock in the morning. I have, we have to serve other people. We have to work. We have to be a mother. We have to be a wife. We have to be a partner. And then we have to go to work and we get treated less than a man and we get less paid, mm -hmm. less paid than a man. Mm -hmm. And we created that. And if we together as all of us to sit down and say, you're not doing nothing wrong. You're just taking care of yourself. Right. Exactly. You're just taking care of yourself. When you're saying no to your children, when you're saying no to your partner, when you're saying it's okay, don't feel guilty about this. And you don't have to work so hard. And that is the really, really simplest thing you can do. Like you said, I, I love the way you said, take care of yourself. That's, that's really what it is. Take care of yourself. Take time for yourself to eat healthy, mm -hmm. to exercise, to, I mean, mm -hmm. why is, what a question you ask, what is it stopping you? What is it stopping you honestly that to take care of yourself? Let we just see, I would, I would, tell you a lot of people will say well i can't exercise because i have four kids i can't eat healthy because you know my husband doesn't like the way i cook uh healthy i can i can't take time for myself to do meditation or anything because i have big family i have to do uh, you know go do this do that or phone calls be on the phone all the time take care of them think about all of that society mm -hmm. you're going by other it's always almost like a uh, you're dancing to everybody else's drum Absolutely. And so what people have to get to a place of is when you're tired of it, like, when are you going to stop the, being on the hamster wheel and you have choices to make? And here's the thing. I don't know how many, if you know who Teal Swan is. Um, absolutely. I just recently discovered her on Instagram. Her name is Teal Swan, T-E-A-L Swan. Uh, I really encourage everyone to go check her out on Instagram. I like her because she's a spiritual teacher, but she, she's a realist at the same time. Um, so like just, I think it was just recently she was, she was saying, okay, what are the top 10 things that drive me nuts? One of them is, you know, like just be positive. She's like, you, you don't just be positive. Like there's, 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 you know, so uh, I, I highly recommend her to people. Um, but I think what people have to get to the heart of is what's underneath the resistance to set boundaries for yourself, because 99.9% .9 of the time that's going to be connected to your past, to your childhood. Um, it's going to live there. Um, because Gosh, I'm trying to think, I'm tr trying to like stay on track. I could go off on so many tangents. <laughs> um, <laughs> because 
our unfinished business, as we call it in the, in the mental health world and therapy, which is, you know, every single one of us comes out of our childhood with unfinished business. None of us are immune to it. We all do from whatever degree to another. And that is the stuff left over from being raised by our parents and whatever that is, emotions, uh, beliefs about ourselves, things that happen to us. Um, expectations that were put on us, expectations we have of ourselves about how we're supposed to be, about how we're supposed to behave. Um, and we end up playing out those things in our relationships with other people. And so at, I think for, for people where the work has to start is what's underlying, what's underlying it for you when you are resisting setting boundaries like what's what's going on with that because everyone i'll say it again everyone um as a human being regardless of where you came from who you are to someone um you have a god given right to be safe to be treated with respect to have your expectations honored to be validated um to be to be treated in a way where you're appreciated and loved we all absolutely have a right to that and so if you find yourself in a situation where you feel guilty or mean or bad for expecting that in your relationships then that's more about you and some work that you probably need to do for yourself and and dig a little deeper to discover why that might be for yourself because we all deserve that every single one of us we do we do well um this is this is amazing like like how do you explain it but i would say right now how you started it saying that a lot of people don't see as an opportunity and saying that hey i just wanted to get to the next day mm -hmm. i wanted to i wanted to go and 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 say one thing to all the women in this group Every day when you get up, there's there's certain thing that you have to do. And like you said, you can't just be positive. It doesn't work that way. Positivity right. comes in over a period of time, mm -hmm. over a lot of practice, a lot of healing, mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. of uh, self-reflecting. But when you get up in the morning, and that's what I practice, and that's what I teach and, and my, my clients, simply ask yourself, do you or do you not agree that you cannot go in the past and it cannot change the past? Right. Do you agree or disagree that you can't go in the future and force it? Right? Absolutely. Yeah, you can't. You leave with right now. And exactly. And right now Absolutely. is is everything. Right now can make your tomorrow better. Right now can make your past better. Start mm -hmm. from here. Start from today. Take one day at a time. We don't know how it goes universe has its own way to right. work the detail out. Now, I don't care how scared you are. I know that this, a lot of change happened, but at the end of the day, get up in the morning and ask yourself, who is the best of me today? Mm -hmm. Who is the best of me today for myself and for my family, for my community and for my country? And if you can remind of yourself as that every single day, and you're gonna stay focused in the present moment, and you're gonna do what is necessary to take care of yourself first and then your family and everything else. And then, the, like you said, that anxiety, that depression, that coming from the past abuse and all of that, all those chaos in your brain, it just like melts away and you are in the present moment of right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what people should focus on, especially now because there's so much uncertainty. Right. And, and the thing that I would also say to people, because I think this is also very much a cultural thing, and that is the taboo of mental health. I mean, there's a lot of taboo around mental health. There's a lot of taboo about seeking assistance and, and, and seeing a therapist. Um, a lot of people feel a lot of shame around it, a lot of embarrassment, right. um, that there's something wrong with them or they're weak for seeing a therapist. And I would say absolutely not. I mean, um, we seek help for everything else in life. <laughs> so why is it, why is it bad to see a, a therapist? And so what I would say to people is that if you're really in a situation where you're really struggling and you don't know how to get out of it, see someone, 
Um, there's no shame in seeing someone because at the very least, what they can help you do is they can help you kind of clear some of that up, kind of put things into perspective and, and kind of bring things forth where you can have aha moments and go, oh, that's why I do that. Oh, that's why I think that way or that, okay. Um, so, you know, it's, it can be very healing. Um, and so I would just say to people that there's no shame in asking for help. There's no shame in seeing someone and trying to work this stuff out because if you're finding that you're trying on your own, because at the end of the day, we're human beings, we're social creatures and we need each other. That's the other piece of why this is so hard right now is that the very thing that we rely upon to get through life when things are hard is each other. And so if we can't be connected to each other, um, that's really, really tough. And I, and again, I can't say it enough. I just, you know, I've been sitting here for the last, how many, how long has it been? Five months, four months. And the people that I worry about the most are children who are in abusive homes, women who are, who are suffering domestic violence, um, people with serious mental health issues, people who are feeling suicidal and having suicidal ideation, who are severely depressed, who are really anxious and really afraid. Um, I worry about people and I worry about them being taken care of. And I just pray that they have people to look out for them and that they have someone in their life to, to um, help them. Um, he yeah. is really serious right now. And I know that there's a lot going on, but we can't forget about that. Uh, those things are still going on, <laughs> even yeah. though we're quarantined or we're on lockdown, those people, there's a lot of people suffering right now. Um, so yeah, but absolutely, you know, I would just encourage anyone if you're having any, um, uh, serious um things going on for yourself please reach out and, and get help absolutely like you said we get help for our for our uh, nutrition we hire a mm -hmm. you know personal trainer for our body so uh there's no shame in asking for help there's no shame in being part of a community like we are right now and this mm -hmm. is like you said one of the things that you might not even going to be thinking about it but we're talking about it and, and and you can resonate and you can be like oh like you said mm -hmm. this is why this is why. And the other thing is that I think our family and friends love us and they always agree with us sometimes. And then hearing it from somebody that you just met in our, like our group, that people that really, they know you, but they really don't know you, that can be really giving you a good advice and say, hey, look, from looking at it from this perspective, I think you should, you know, you should do this. So, but together we can get together and then we can help. So, um, just keep our message out there. Just go on, on social media and keep con continue telling those women that if you need help, you know, reach out, reach out. That's what I do. I go on my Instagram, please reach out. And we all have a platform. I know a platform is not as big as a lot of other people, but even if two people, we can, one person, if we right. can help one person, absolutely. that is, that's, that means something. So that's why I thank you so much, Shannon, for coming over here and taking your time in this day and talking about this because it is important, especially for us women that are uh, putting so much and a lot of uh, women in this group are going through so much right now. And I really appreciate that they tell their story. Like I know Ellen said that she had a problem with her relationship right now. And we said, please do share because we're here to support you. So if you feel, if you feel a stress or anxiety or anything, don't hesitate to reach out. We, we are here all together. Agree, right? right. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, you know, and thank you for having me because I, you know, I could talk about this stuff all day. Um, yeah. It's really important. And um, I just can't stress enough that it is important that people reach out if they're struggling, yeah. um, because we need each other yeah. and we, and especially right now, I mean, there's, I just, again, there's just so much uncertainty for people, um, and what's happening and, you know, and, and even for those people who have it all together, um, everyone's feeling it. I mean, you're not, that's the one thing is that there, if there's one thing we definitely, because I do have to say, <laughs> I will say the one thing that does drive me nuts um, when I see it on commercials on TV, when it's, we're all in this together, I want to go, you know, we're not all in this together. No. We're not. Um, I get the intention behind it, but we're really not. Um, there are people who, I mean, you know, no offense to anyone, but it's really tough for me to hear a celebrity 
who's living in their mansion with millions of dollars that they have saved in the bank and they're not working right now, it's easy for them to say, oh, we're all in this together. And I want to say, well, actually, we're not. There are people who are living day to day who don't know, you know, am I going to get evicted? Am I going to find a job? Am I going to be able to put food on the table for my family tomorrow? What am I going to do about my child if you know, in terms of the plans going back to school and I don't have childcare and they're going to do this every other week thing. What do I do about the weeks when I have to be at work? Or am I going to find a job? Or, I mean, there's no, it's not equal. This is, the, there's no, not equality. at all. Not there's at no all. Equality happening and we're all in this together. Um, so I, for per, me personally, that saying drives me insane because I'm like, no, we're not actually. You're, you're kind of forgetting about the people who are really, really, who, the people who are really struggling. Um, because on top of worrying about, you know, their own fears about COVID and their own health and how it's going to impact them, they have all the other stuff with it. So it's a lot. I mean, it's, it's a lot. And I but just really worry. I, I appreciate that you keep saying that, Shannon, because this is why, like you said, we're not to their level. They're not going to understand this. But what we have is this. If we can get together and emphasize on this, mm -hmm. If we all, each of us, and emphasize, no, we're not. Like you said, you have your Beverly Hill house, you're living with the thing. You have a, a you don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. But for average people like us, and if we can, every and each of us, please get up and, and opinion your voice. Mm -hmm. Don't be one of those people say like, you know what? No, I have problem of my own. No, just get up and speak about it because together, we can change those people and we can change the people that, like you said, that they can, don't even have food and they're thinking about killing themselves. Mm -hmm. And we have to do this. This is not one of those times that, okay, I feel like voting, but I didn't vote, but what happened? This is not political. This is not, this is about human life. This is about our health, mental health. This is about our happiness. This is about our new right. generation. This right. is about our new generation. So yes, if you, don't be ashamed to ask for help. Don't be ashamed to come out and, and say, this is how I feel. I need help. Somebody, someone needs to help me. And mm. you'd be amazed how many people will show up, but we have to speak about it. We have yeah. to, and that's how we can heal each other. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, it's, it's unfortunate too, because I think often what gets drowned out with the media is that there's so much focus on the division and the divisiveness that's happening that I really think at the end of the day for all of us, just, you know, um, living our daily lives, I think at the end of the day, when someone needs help, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna make that happen. We're gonna come together. And I really do believe in the human spirit. And I believe that at the end of the day, regardless of, you know, our disagreements or where we stand on the issue, I think when it comes down to just basic humanity, I think that, um, I see people going to people's aid and I think that that is still there and it's unfortunate that we don't see it enough um, and I don't think we see it enough because I don't think it's highlighted enough because that's not exciting news. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, that's why he was here, Shannon. So I'm so happy you came in. No, seriously. I'm sure. Hey, we got to make our own news. <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, but I thank you for having me. Oh, and, my pleasure. Um, it's so nice to see you again. Yeah. But uh, I will come back again, please, because uh, we have to share our opinion and our ideas. And I'm, I'm so glad you, you give us some very important um, information about like, you know, being therapists and, and all of that. So the listeners can just say, like you said, have that aha -ha moment and say, you know what? I feel that way. Yes, what it is. But that's why we're here. And I thank you so much for taking the time coming over here. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. It was fun. <laughs>